Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the UFC card for this weekend, uh, coming from Canada, and we're going to be looking at it from a betting perspective, and again, for those of you that are watching this for the first time, uh, we take a very contrarian approach to all sorts of wagering, whether it be on MMA fights, NBA uh, games, hockey, uh, even the stock market, you know, and any time that there is a, a, uh, a, a very, very liquid pool where just millions and millions of dollars, in some sense, billions of dollars are being plowed into these pools. Um, we're, we, it's very difficult to proclaim an edge based on just raw talent, you know, based on the raw ability to out analyze all of this money that's coming in. So what, what I've found over the many, many years I've been doing this at many different levels is that it's more useful to attempt to gauge where the psychology of the sides are. Um, the idea being that if you can presume that the line is somewhat efficient, if you can somehow figure out which part of the line is being driven by public bias, you can get an idea of which side is probably overvalued as opposed to undervalued. And, and, and when it comes to MMA specifically, one thing that I've noticed is that what the public tends to do is create a very binary outcome. In other words, they'll say that either X is going to win by this method or B is going to win by that method. They always figure out there's just only two things that could happen. And whenever the public kind of sets that type of binary outcome, those two outcomes tend to be overbet. And the outcomes, which are still way, very, very likely, but are just not considered part of that binary outcome, tend to be under bet. So what we're trying to do here when it comes to MMA analysis is get a sense for where the public is and essentially fade it, um, both in uh, straight bets and in props. Last week was, was rough, and we were so close to a couple of real big ones. We had, what's his name? Um, we had Albazi by sub at like in round three at like 15 to one. And, and my car France was like one millimeter from tapping and it would have gotten us a bit, you know, pretty decent win for the day, but it didn't happen. So we ended up with a pretty big loss for the day because we took a lot of shots in other, in other fights and it just didn't work out. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we're still way up and we're going to continue to apply the same types of, you know, types of analysis that we do in other forms of wagering to MMA. Um, we're going to do one thing different this week. So let's go over the rules. The rules are that we are going to have an opinion on every fight, and we are going to bet one unit on you know, one thing for well, one bet per fight. And you're going to see me actually put those uh, put that bet in. The one thing I'm going to do differently this week is if there's a fight that I don't feel there is any public bias one way or another, where I can't really figure out which side to fade, I, what I'll do is I'll just pick who I like and we'll include that in kind of a parlay that we will add in the end. So let's just say there are 11 fights and I like, you know, I think seven fights are real good, you know, fade sides and four of them, there's just nothing. And I just have to make a pick. We're just going to take those four kind of non-public biased picks and put them in some big parlay. Um, so I do want to have action on every fight, but, uh, I'm not going to force some, you know, bias where it doesn't exist. Uh, for example, uh, let's get into it. So the first fight of the night is Diana Belbita versus Maria Oliveira. And, you know, I, I've seen arguments for both sides. Um, I've seen arguments for this fight to go the distance. I've seen people argue that this fight could finish. So there's really is no kind of public um, consensus on the way this could go. And it's not really any binary outcome involved either. So what we're going to do is we are just going to give our opinion here. And, and I happen to, um, and I happen to like Belbita in this spot. So we're just going to include her in our parlay. And this is going to be kind of like a no shot parlay that we will, you know, um, that was kind of thrown at the end uh, for one unit as well. So it's going to be a 108 hour parlay and we're going to try to remember this. Um, yeah. We're going to write this down. So be, be Belbita. That's just my opinion on the fight. 
you know, this is it's really not as important as some of these other takes we're going to have, but we're going to include that as the big parlay at the end. Okay. Uh, David Dvorak versus Steve Eckrig. Now, I don't know what it is. So, so Dvorak has developed this reputation for being kind of like a thinking man's fighter. So the idea is that is that Dvorak, while he's not much of a finisher, he's just basically going to out technique Steve Eckrig. And if Eckrig, you know, has a path to victory, it's going to be really early. So the idea is that Dvorak is going to fight off the onslaught and then win either late or by decision. So the the, the sides of this that we can't bet are Eckrig early or Dvorak by decision or late. So if we are going to get, get some kind of side here, it's going to have to be um, either Dvorak in like say round one, that's probably undervalued and also, or Eckrig by decision. Um, let's take a look and see what these props are for this fight. Um, so if you want to play, for example, um, Eckrig by decision, you get plus 500. Dvorak, let's see Dvorak round one. Dvorak, Round one is plus 600, um, but it's actually by specifically KO or TKO. Doesn't let you get there by submission as well. So, but you could go Dvorak round one plus 450, and I think that's what we're going to do. So I, I don't really know whether it's going to be submission or KO. So we're going to go with Dvorak round one plus 450. Uh, and again, one unit for us is 180. So we will put that in. Dvorak for 180 uh, plus 450. In uh, plus 450 round one Dvorak for 180. Okay, moving on, Kyle Nelson versus Blake uh, Milder um, or Builder. So, Builder or Bilder, you know, he, he looked pretty good in his last fight. And Nelson, I, I've heard, is just is quote unquote, you know, non UFC material. And you are, you can look far and wide, and you're really not going to find any take that, 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 that likes Kyle Nelson in this spot. This is, this is kind of like his last shot. He's kind of probably going to be cut after this. And Bilder is going to be, you know, he's kind of the up and comer. Um, but the fact is, I mean, he's only like, it's not like, it's like seven to one. It's only like two to one. Um, so I have to think that the over bet side of this is going to be anything with builder involved, whether it be builder by decision, because people, you know, that, that, that's certainly I've heard that take builder by KO. And the other thing that I've, I've seen is that if Kyle Nelson is going to win, he's going to get after him early. Um, so the things that you can't bet, in my opinion, or anything with, with Blake Builder or Kyle Nelson early, what you can bet is either Kyle Nelson by decision or just Kyle Nelson um, just on the money line. Because I've just not heard the Kyle Nelson dog shot you know, anywhere. So we're going to go ahead and, you know, let's get a little bit more conservative. We'll take Kyle Nelson just plus the 210. So Kyle Nelson plus the 210 for 180. And we will stake all singles for 180, and we'll do it at the end. All right, so we have, uh, well, this one I like. So Aori Kilang versus uh, Amon Zahabi. So this is what you you have. You have Zahabi is, this is the, this, this is the consensus. Zahabi is a thinking man's fighter. He has a good game plan, but he's low volume. And people that say that Zahabi's going to win, they're basically saying that, well, he'll figure out a Corey uh, Lang. He'll figure out where's the best place to attack him and he'll win kind of a very calculated decision. And on the other hand, you'll have, you know, you, you're getting a lot of love for uh, Aori Lang. Um, and they're saying that he's more aggressive. He might actually get a finish. Um, so, the sides that you can't take, in my opinion, or anything, really anything with, well, you could play a Corey Lang, I guess, but he's probably the more light side. But the interesting part is you can't play Zahabi by decision or anything involving kind of like that slow pace, because that's, that's really just the overwhelming consensus. 
what I think I'd like to do is just kind of plays a hobby inside the distance here. So let's take a look at his prop. Maybe this whole fight inside the distance. Well, the fight inside the distance is um, so under one and a half is 275. It's pretty interesting. But let's take a look at fight props. You have fight doesn't go the distance plus 140. That's pretty, pretty reasonable, but let's, 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 let's do, um, um, let's see what uh, Zahabi is inside the distance. Zahabi win by, Zahabi by TKO. Or a can land by decision. These are like ridiculous. They're not even giving me anything here. Zahabi, there it is. By TKO or submission, it's plus 400. We're going to try this. So Zahabi inside the distance, plus 400. Um, and again, the good thing about playing the playing uh, MMA my way is that you're going to be on stuff that literally nobody else is on. Uh, so when, when, it, when it wins, you'll be the only one cheering. Anyway. Uh, moving on, we have Miranda Maverick versus Jasmine uh, Josevicius. This, I unfortunately, was going to suggest that uh, that Jasmine was not liked by anybody, but unfortunately, or fortunately, you are getting some kind of semi-sharp money that's coming in on Josevicius. So, I don't really think you're getting much of an edge as far as the um, as far as the straight money line. Um. So unfortunately, this is a fight that probably there's no real consensus. The one thing I have heard is that Miranda Maverick might just kind of just, you know, win a more boring decision. So what you could do is you could play Maverick inside the distance. So it's either going to be Maverick inside the distance or just kind of pass the fight. So let's take a look at some of these odds here. So Maverick inside the distance. Well, by submission is plus 400. It's not bad. By TKO plus 800. Well, let's just look at just her inside the distance in general. Maverick by TKO submission is plus 300. That's good enough for me. Let's take Maverick by inside the distance plus 300. All right, Nassim Imavov versus Chris Curtis. Um, okay. This one is kind of accepted by pretty much everybody that it's going to be a striking-based affair because all Chris Curtis fights are. And this fight is going to resemble pretty clearly the Curtis-Hermanson fight where... Hermanson was able to just keep Curtis at range, kind of pick him apart, sort of, and frustrate Chris Curtis. And it also kind of will resemble his last fight against Gaston, where Gaston kind of kept at range and, you know, didn't engage Curtis in the big brawl. Um, so, unfortunately, the, the, the two sides that are going to be pretty well, well represented are Imavov and Imavov by decision. Um, so the only thing you could really play here, you could play Imamov inside the distance, which, um, I think is, uh, I think it's pretty interesting. Now, Curtis has never been finished as far as I've watched him. Um, he's really super tough, but, um, I think that's kind of the way to go. So let's take a look at this. The only other thing you could do is Curtis by decision. So let's take a look. Um, Imavov, now again, I wouldn't say method of victory because even though Curtis has not been taken down, if Imavov does actually get, get him down, he could get a submission. And I don't want to bet Im Imavov inside the distance and then have him get a random submission and we lose. So we're going to take a look at, first we'll look at Curtis by decision. Curtis by decision is plus only 330. Um, I have a feeling that Imavov inside the distance going to be better. Let's see. Imavov by, it's, about the, it's actually the same. 
Um, but we're going to do this. We're going to go Emovolve by inside the distance plus 300. All right, we have Mark Andre Burial versus Eric Anders. Um, Mark Andre Burial is more of a pressure fighter, and I've heard a lot of takes that he's just more well rounded. Eric Anders has a you know natural athlete, having played football, and he has some wrestling upside. Um, so there's really not a big bias one way or the other. So this is going to be another fight that we're just going to pass. But I happen to like Barrio inside the distance here. I think he's going to take it to Anders. So we're going to put that in there. So we're going to put Mark Andrew Barrio inside the distance. But we're putting it in our parlay, putting it in our no-shot parlay alongside with Bell Beat. Um, okay, Dan Ige versus Nate Landweir. Um Heard a little bit too much of this one. So, again, we have kind of a, a a binary fight here that either, well, I shouldn't say that, that Ige really can knock him out in the first round or Nate Landweir maybe can, can, can has that dog in him. I love when people say that. has the dog in him and can fight it out and maybe get a submission late or something like that. But Landweir is, is considered a pretty pretty popular underdog. One thing I haven't gotten, there are two, two, two sides of this that I think are really interesting. And I know which way I'm going to go. Dan Ige by decision, I think that's pretty pretty live here. And we're going to check the odds on that. But the part, the, the, the side that I have not seen any love for at all is the Ige by submission. And he actually does have some grappling of his own. And if, in fact, Landweir just starts to, to try for some panic takedowns or something, I think there's a world where Ige gets a submission, and I have a feeling that line is going to be really big. So let's take a look at this. First look at Ige by decision first. Um, Ige by decision is plus 250. That's no fun. Ige by submission plus 700. Let's go. I'm down with that one. I mean, he does have good, you know, good grappling. He just doesn't use it too often. And I think that, again, that he puts enough pressure on – Landwehr with his striking, that Landwehr might go for some panic takedown, and and next thing you know, Ige could get a gu guillotine or maybe got get his back or something like that. At a plus seven hundred, I'm willing to take my chances. Um, all right, Mike Malott versus Adam Fugit. Um, Mike Malott is kind of the pride and joy of Canada. And this fight is basically a fixed fight for him. That's what you're hearing. That they're giving him somebody he can beat so that he can be on showcase for the world to see. And so as a result, we're going to be taking Adam Fugit in this spot. So Adam Fugit to beat the fixed fight, to beat the Canadians. Um, I should probably take Fugit inside the distance because I don't think he can win a decision with the Canadian judges, but we're just going to take Fugit plus the 175. Fugit plus 175. All right. And then you have Charles Oliveira versus Benil Dariush. All right. So unfortunately, you're you're not getting too much bias one way or the other because you're getting people that really like to bet on Charles Oliveira and they will they are you have people that are making a pretty good case for Dariush and there is one and and you're 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 getting a pretty good case for either side inside the distance and you're also hearing some love for Dariush by decision so there's only two things you can really bet here is that the completely overlooked and ignored Oliveira by decision? Or it could just pass the fight and go for your uh and go for your parlay. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm I'm gonna go for uh I'm gonna pass this fight, include this in my parlay. And I happy to happen to think this fight does finish. So we're gonna bet this one. Oliveira Dariush inside the distance. I don't know which side. Um, and that's going to be part of that three-team parlay, which we're going to get back to in a minute.
And finally, we have um, Amanda Nunez versus Irene Aldana. So, you know, here's what you, here's what we got. We have Amanda Nunez, who avenged her most recent defeat to Juliana, Juliana Pena. And she was set to fight her a third time, but that fight was 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 scrapped. So unfortunately, the narrative you're hearing is that maybe you're not going to get the best of Amanda Nunez. Um, but if you do, she's could be, uh, you know, look like a huge, huge favorite here. And the idea is that Nunez, if she's right, she's going to just just thrash her. OK, um, and even if she's not right. She probably is going to get a win, but maybe by decision. But in both cases, you know, I'm definitely getting a lot of Nunez, but only quote if she's right. And the Aldana side is really basically if in fact, um, if in fact, uh, you know, you don't get the best of Nunez, Aldana's live. But what you're not getting is the fact that maybe Aldana is just better anyway, and maybe she wins and. Uh, regardless of whether Nunez, you get her best. Nonetheless, we are going to take the Aldana side. And what we're going to do is, we're again, just like every other card, we're going to presume we're going to be going 0-10 or 0 and, I guess, 8 here. But we, so we're going to be betting something that gets you 9-1. to 1, And it's going to be something on the Aldana side. So let's just take a look at this. It's going to be, let's see. Aldana by KO plus 650. I think that that is, I think that's you know, obviously a side that some people are taking here. How about Aldana by decision? That's actually very similar in price. Aldana by submission plus 16. Can she win by submission? I mean, I will say this. Nunez got submitted by... Pena in her loss, right? So Aldana plus 1600. I don't know. You know what we're gonna do? Unfortunately, we're just gonna include this in our in our parlay. I really don't have much of an opinion here. I mean, I, I shouldn't say I don't have an opinion. I mean, I, there's really not an overwhelming bias either side here. So if I'm gonna keep this real, I'm just gonna include this one in the no shot parlay. So which side are we gonna play? We're, we're definitely taking the Aldana side of this. So Aldana plus 265 is going to be part of the no-shot parlay. So Aldana plus 265. All right. So let us review these incredibly awful bets that we did. Uh, and then we're going to do the parlay as well. So um, Dvorak round one plus 450. Kyle Nelson plus 210. Zahabi by inside the distance plus 400. Maverick, uh, inside the distance, plus 300. Wow, we got a lot of violence here. Imovov, inside the distance, plus 300. Ige, by submission, plus 700. Adam Fugit, plus 175. So we're going to put this one in. We'll put all these in. Let's see. The, let's bet it. Probably not. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna wait till the end. Okay. So they'll, they'll get my location after I get out of here. Get out of here. Um, but I want to see what this parlay is like. but I'm not going to remember what I did here. Well, in any case, we're going to do a parlay with Belbita, Marc-Andre Burial, Inside the Distance, um, uh, Darius Oliveira, Inside the Distance, and Aldana, plus 265. But I will say this, that if we are live after those first three, I mean, I might go out and hedge this one out, honestly. I mean, that's a big, big number. You know, when you have Belbita and both Barrio inside the distance and the other one. So I don't know. I might end up picking that one out, but who knows? Depends how much we're losing in the rest of the day. So anyway, uh, that'll do it. Uh, again, this is not for the week. You're getting a lot of long shots here and a lot of long shots which don't make any sense. But when you're dealing with the contrarian, that's just what you have to do. Uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.